Hi guys and welcome to this week's video from Bite Size Excel. Today we're going to take a very quick look at the indirect function. Now this is a handy little function that essentially returns a self-reference from a given string of text. Now it'll be quite useful when you want to create more dynamic lookups or potentially look up different sheets in your workbook. But today we're just going to take a quick look at the basics. So to use this function, we type equals indirect. And then the first part of your function is your reference text. So in this instance, I'm going to select this cell A2. Now the second part is optional. Essentially, if you leave it blank, it returns your cell reference in the same format that is typically seen in Excel. So A1, B1, and so on and so forth. The second option is to have it in R1C1 style, which is essentially your row first and your column first. But typically you'd either select true or just leave it blank. So if I go indirect A2 and hit enter, you'll notice that what it's returning is this hello. And that's because it's looking at this cell A2, which states G2 in it, which is referring to this cell here. We could do something similar, so we could say equals indirect, and we can build up our reference in this instance. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to say H, and then we're going to select the two separate, and again, I'm going to leave the second part blank. And this instance is looking at cell H2, which is 75. If I were to change this to I, you'll notice now it returns 420 because it's looking up cell I2, which is over here. Now where this can be particularly useful is where you're looking up different sheets. So in this instance, I have sheets two, three, and four written in here as text. So if we look on sheet two, we've got 10 in cell A1, 200 in cell A1 and sheet three, and 3000 in sheet four. So typically when I look at a value, so say I were to go equals, then go to sheet two and select cell A1. You'll see that that reference is built up with the name of the sheet, an exclamation mark, and then the cell reference. And we can build this up using indirect. So equals indirect. We want the first part to be sheet two. Then we'll put the ampersand in to join text together. And because I want the next bit to be static, we're going to open up some brackets put an exclamation mark in and then A1 and close my brackets. I'll close my, and we'll see that we get 10 in here. And if I were to drag it down, you get the 200 and the 3000 from sheet three and sheet four. Now this works quite well if this is a drop down list. Now another thing you can do with indirect is use it in conjunction with other formulas, which is where it becomes particularly useful. So say in this instance, I want to go equal sum and I want indirect. And say I always wanted to refer to, to cells from 20 to 24. I'll open some brackets. I'll go A20 to A24, close those brackets. And we'll see we get 150, which is the sum of these. Now, the reason this is handy is because if I insert some additional cells in here, it will still be referring to 20 to 24, which you can see the sum of that is 30. So even though I've added in extra columns, it's still retaining that original reference. Now where indirect can be particularly useful is building up a dynamic lookup. So in this instance, what I have is I have a worksheet where I've got 2019 sales and 2020 sales by month. And what I've done is I've named the ranges here. So these cells are called sales underscore 2019. And these ones here are called sales underscore 2020. If you'd want to understand a little bit more about named ranges, I'll leave a link to my video on these in the description below. But then essentially what I have is I have a drop down that looks at the year and a drop down that looks at the month. And using the indirect function, I'm doing a VLOOKUP to look at particular values. Now how this works, it's VLOOKUP, it's looking at my month, so that's my first column. And then it's using indirect to say which table I want to look it up in. 
So if we were to just pull this bit out so I can explain how it works, we'll come over here, we'll say equals, we'll pop that in. And essentially sales underscore is the first part of my named range. And then plus is referring to A2, which is either the 2019 or 2020. And what it does is it will return that entire named range. So if I were to hit enter, you can see it's pulled and copied over the 2020 table here. And if I were to change this, it's done the same thing with the 2019 table. So essentially the indirect function is actually telling it what the table we're looking up is. Then we're looking at the second column and returning a value where it's an exact match. Again, I've got videos on both the VLOOK and the XLOOKUP functions. Do check them out if you want to know a little bit more about how these work. But as you can see, we can change our month and it will pull up 2019 June 603 and you can see that that's correct. So using indirect in conjunction with other formulas and things like named ranges can help you create really dynamic workbooks. Do hope that you found this short video useful. Remember to like and subscribe and I do look forward to seeing you in a future video.